My name is Forrest, and I'm originally from New Hampshire, a thousand miles away. I'm a freshman here at the U, and I'm in Carlson. And so, to be honest, I applied to 11 schools. Minnesota was definitely not my top choice. It was a third overall. Applied to a different school. Each school was in a different state. One was in Canada. And Minnesota happened to be the cheapest large university in the country, and compared to most large universities, by about seven grand a year. I am saving money coming here compared to my in-state public school, including the plane tickets I have. That being said, I came to college, and at first, all the new experiences, new opportunities. I loved it, all the new freedom. And then, around October, November, it, I hit the shift, and I realized I wasn't hanging out with the right people. I wasn't going about college at all how I wanted to, how I should. And I started becoming depressed, and I probably got to one of the lowest lows I've ever gotten to. I went home over winter break and talked to my friends, my family, and it was comforting hearing that but it was comforting hearing that other people had a bad time too. <laughs> it's like, oh, sweet, I'm not alone. Like, this happens to everyone. But it still sucks. And so, I remember on the way to the airport, back on the East Coast, I'm talking to my mom, and I was talking to her about specific things I could do to change things up. How can I come back to campus and not feel so crappy. And what I had realized is I was feeling so crappy because everything kind of compounded on itself. When you're not hanging out with the right friends, you don't feel like you quite belong. Your emotional stability isn't quite fully there. You end up hanging out in your room more, uh, not putting yourself out there, not pushing your own comfort zones. And it's not good, it's not healthy. And so I started thinking of specific steps I could take. I got to campus, and I remember I'm, I'm walking with uh, my suitcase, and it was in that moment, something snapped. Something snapped where I realized, wow, life is incredible. And from that point on, I wasn't depressed anymore. And it wasn't, it was all of a sudden, it was out of nowhere. Nothing changed, my reality was exactly the same. But my attitude, my mindset, my outlook, had all changed completely, drastically. And so, I started looking at things differently. The world became a playground. Life was wealthy, it was healthy, it was loving, it was adventurous, it was incredible, because I let it be. And so, I'm gonna to talk tonight about two things. One is the law of attraction, and the other is how I've defined meaning. And so, I used both of these ideas, these principles, in order to give me these mindsets that really helped me grow. And I noticed that if I were to draw a quick little, I guess, uh, graph of my excitement with college, it went boom. <laughs> so, I realized I had the wrong friends, boom, depressed, flattened out over winter break, then sl slowly started going uphill, then it got to this point where once I started really fully thinking about what I wanted in life, what I wanted out of life, and how I was going to do that, life wasn't just going up at a positive rate anymore. It was literally accelerating. It was getting to the point where every day wasn't just better than the last. It was twice as good, ten times as good, a hundred times as good. But my reality was exactly the same, and how could that be? because my outlook changed every single day. It continues to grow and grow. So the first principle I will talk about is called the Law of Attraction. And this law just states that nothing was ever created before thought. That everything has all come from a thought. And so, how, what, what does that mean? That means that thoughts progress to actions. That if you think about something, 
eventually you will have an action that correlates with it. If you are watching a TV show and then all of a sudden a commercial comes on for Burger King or McDonald's or some fast food place pizza, you're like, oh, oh, I'm hungry now. And then you go to your fridge during the commercials and you get some food. So your thought of food that was implanted in your brain by the commercial correlates with the action of getting food. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. So then, how do, what, what do actions correlate with? Actions correlate with your behaviors. You do something enough, it's going to become a behavior of yours. If you keep going to get food, again and again, like I do a lot, it's going to be a behavior of, oh, wow, I feel like a gluttonous pig sometimes, but I love it. <laughs> and so, what happens when you keep doing your behaviors again and again? Eventually, it becomes part of who you are. It becomes part of your personality, your values. Deep down, who are you? And this law of attraction, what, what does it say? It says that this is the flow. It does not go this way. You can't say, here is my personality, here is my values, here is who I am. And then just believe that. You have to show who you are through your thoughts, through your actions. I can't say, I value health. And say, that's who I am. I have to think, wow, I value health. And then that will show through my action of not just, oh, I value health, I'm going to take a shower every day and brush my teeth. No, I value health. I'm going to floss. I'm going to exercise. I'm going to eat healthy. You have to go from your thoughts to your personality. It's not the other way around. Okay, so how can I explain this in a better way? I have this quick story, and I have a feather around my neck to explain it. Picture yourself in a university course, public speaking, then all. Okay. <laughs> and your teacher gives you an easy assignment. All right, class, today, all I need you to do for the week is go out, you can't buy it, but you have to find a feather and then bring it back on Monday. And it's Monday now, and you're like, thanks, teach, easy enough, sounds good, sweet, sweet. And you're excited because you get a midterm that week. You didn't want to have too much work to do, and you're like, all right, easy enough. And so you don't really think about it much. It's not quite in your thoughts. Tuesday rolls around, and you're still like, yeah, whatever, that super assignment doesn't really matter. All right, Wednesday comes up, and you had your midterm, and you're stressed from that. So afterwards, you just want to relax, you go out with your friends for the night, and then you come back, go to bed. You've forgotten about the feather completely. All right, crap, now Thursday comes around and you remember this assignment. You start thinking about it. And you're like, okay, well, I can't buy it. Where am I going to look? So you're like, maybe I'll find one on my pillow. For some reason, <laughs> there's none to be found. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I'll find one on the sidewalk. No, up in a tree, like a bird's nest. And you're having trouble. You're like, okay, I still have a few more days. Nothing to worry about. Friday comes around and... You're still looking for it, and this time, you're starting to get a little bit worried, so you spend a few hours outside. You're looking around, walking on trails. You are searching for this feather. You're not too, too worried, but you realize that you're going to find it. It'll pop up. But it doesn't. You spend hours all day, more, more time than you thought. And you're like, crap, I guess I'll have to go out Saturday. Saturday, you spend eight hours, almost your whole day, outside looking. <laughs> You're looking on your way to class. Well, you don't have class on Saturday unless you have an online course. But you're looking outside, you're looking inside, you're looking everywhere you can to find this feather. Now you're getting frustrated. Now you're, you're anxious, you're nervous. You don't want to get a zero because she said if you don't bring it in, you will fail the assignment. And so you're getting pretty worried and you don't know what to do. So you say, okay, I still have Sunday. I have Sunday. Sunday, you wake up. Now you're almost like pulling your hair out because you're so stressed out. And you're looking around, and this time you're almost like ready to like rip open your pillow. And, and you're going to your friends' rooms and you're looking at their pillows. And, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, why are you sticking my pillow? Like, what are you doing? And you're just like, no, it's not what you think. Like, this is for school. It's okay. <laughs> and you go to bed Sunday night almost in tears and stressed out, and you, you can't find this feather. You, it's overwhelmed you so much that you cry a little bit before bed. 
or is it not? That doesn't matter at all. So, you go to school on Monday. You go into your class. You see a teacher pissed off. You won't even look at her. You sit in the back. Just kind of mumble to yourself. <laughs> and the teacher uh, asks everyone for their feather. And you're the one kid who doesn't get out of his seat to give your teacher the feather. And you're just like, ah, of course, I'm the only one. So after class, you try to explain to your teacher, look, like, I'm so sorry, I, I spent all week, I, I spent hours and hours looking for this feather. Like, can you please just give me one more day, a couple more days? I promise, I promise, I will find this. And you're just thinking to yourself, I have a life. Like, don't tell her that. I'll, 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 I'll do whatever I have to do, but you don't tell her that. It doesn't matter. She's not going to give you a break. She says, sorry, this was your assignment. You had seven days. I, I can't give you full credit. So you're just stressed out, pissed off. So you leave the room. You're done with her. And you start walking down the hallway. And all of a sudden, as you're in your kind of grumpy mood, something changes. But it's not because of you. It's because you look up, and down the hall, you see this girl or guy staring at you. And they're not just like creepily staring, they're staring and they have a, a slight smile. And when they see that you're looking, their smile grows. And holy crap, now they're approaching you. And they're getting closer. And you don't know what to do. Old, nervous, like you have to work, you're up here. They're getting closer and closer, and they're going right at you. And then they approach you, and they approach you, and you're like, holy crap, now what do I say? What do I think? What do I do? What do I do? What do I say? It doesn't matter. They're taking control of the conversation. They've led it, and you're just following. And it's easy. It's natural. You talk for 20 minutes to the stranger. So comfortable. Eventually, you end up Forty years later, marrying this person and having kids. <laughs> Crazy story, but in that moment when you first met them, after four minutes of talking, all of a sudden, you slam your hand down on the ground and you almost just start crying and you're pissed off and excited and she's like, what's going on? What's going on? He's, go he's, he's freaking out. He they don't understand what you're doing. And you explain, excuse me. purposely put that feather in your ear today? And it's just hanging right above the ear, right in their hair. And they're like, what are you talking about? Oh, this feather? Yeah, yeah. I wear it every day. And you're, you're just freaking out. Like, I had this assignment, and you start explaining the whole story. I spend all week looking for a feather, and then of course, right after when it's due, you see it, you find this feather, and you're just like, what the hell? And so, 40 years later, you tell everyone the story of how you met, and the whole homework assignment, and the feather. And this story has two ways to look at it. You can either look at it in a, uh, I guess, conventional, and neither is wrong. One way is conventional religious standpoint wouldn't normally say, oh, but like that's fate. That feather was almost planted there. That was, that your destiny was to meet that person. That was meant to happen. And you were supposed to be stressed out and get a zero on that assignment so that you would find that person and marry them and have a wonderful life. The law of attraction is a little bit different. The law of attraction says that your thoughts progress all the way to your personality. So how does that relate to this story? Monday, the feather was not in your thoughts other than when she initially told you, your teacher. So are, are your actions going to correlate with that? Yeah, you're not going to be looking for the feather. You're not going to be going out of your way to find the feather. As the week progresses, your actions will correlate as you think about it. Holy crap, now it's Thursday, I need to <coughs> think about this feather more, and you're stressing out over it, causing you to think about it more. You're going to look for it more. You're going to spend more time looking for this feather. Eventually, you're going to look for it so much, it's going to be part of your behavior that week. Your behavior is going out of your way to complete this assignment. It's stressful. It's nerve-wracking. You're, you're anxious. And then that, for the week, becomes your personality. This 
nervous, kind of stress-filled person who's thinking about a feather. Don't think about the feather, you're not going to be stressed out. You're not going to be looking for it a bunch. You're not going to be looking for it at all. If you do think about the feather, you will look for it. And so the law of attraction doesn't stay, say that that person that you saw with the feather in the air, that was meant to happen. It says that that opportunity popped into your life because you were thinking about it. People who don't think about feathers would have never bumped into that person. Or even if they had, they wouldn't have made the connection with that feather. When you're walking down the street and there's a feather on the ground, most of you will not notice it because you're not thinking about it. If you have a project focused on feathers, you will think about it. So why is the law of attraction important? It is so important for all of us in our everyday life. Because what it says is nothing is impossible as long as you believe, as long as you think it is possible. People don't fulfill their full potential because they think they can't. I can't do that, I can't be this, that's not real, that's not possible. Everything is possible if you think about it. Thoughts allow for creation. Thoughts equal creation. Nothing was created before thought. And so, if you think you can do something, even if you can't, you will get much closer to achieving it than if you say, I can never do that. So then there's a second piece to all of this that ties in very well. It's called life. <laughs> Cheesy, I know. <laughs> and life is something that I made up for my public speaking course. <laughs> What is life? Life is whatever you want it to be. Uh, in my speech on the meaning of life, I defined what the meaning is. And what I defined it as is, it's whatever you want it to be. It is adventurous. It is awful. It is incredible. It is wealthy. It is healthy. It is poor. It is rich. It is your perception of reality. There are over 7 billion people in the world, all living the same exact reality with seven billion different perspectives. It's all how we look at life. And it's not that some people necessarily have better lives than others, but that they let themselves have better lives. They think about it and allow for it to happen. So how can you allow for this to happen? Well, there are some easy principles. And they may not come off as initially easy, but as you do with the comfort zone challenges, you start small. You work your way up. L. L stands for learning moments. Learning moments are huge. Why are they huge? Because it's saying that there is no such thing as failure in life. Failure is not real. You do not make mistakes. Because you learn from them. You let yourself learn from them. Every time you learn, you're receiving input, insight, to how to improve for the future. You're not failing, you're learning. Those who don't succeed in life, those who don't thrive, think, oh wow, I suck, I'm failing, I'm doing awful. You could apply this to right now. I could come up here and make a fool of myself, I could be completely embarrassed, I could mess up, I could pee my pants. <laughs> but that would be awesome. I would be happy to pee my pants in front of all of you. Because I would be learning. I would be learning how to get up in my fear of public speaking. I'd be learning how to talk in front of a crowd. I would be getting insight and input as to how to improve for the future. And so it'd be easier to talk to strangers or talk to a crowd for the future. Forrest, this is your two minute warning. Quickly round through these last ones. <laughs> I is for ingenious. Ingenious is the same way that, or ingenuity, is what Albert Einstein was. He was curious, he asked questions, he was inquisitive. How can you use that in your life? Well, always be curious. There is this thing called a gap in your knowledge that anytime you come across something where you're like, ooh, I don't know, you can either be frustrated or bored by it, or you can be intrigued and say, wow, I don't know. I want to. Look it up. Look it up, because you're increasing <coughs> your bubble of knowledge. F is for feedback. Feedback is so important. 
Feedback is incredibly important because it tells you so much. Verbal feedback, nonverbal feedback. I could talk to my friend Avik over here after and say, hey, how did I do? He would give me verbal feedback. That's making me learn. Learn how to improve for the future so my potential grows. I could look at all of you right now. I could look at nonverbal feedback and see how you're responding and then try to interact differently or the same or how you interact with others depends so much on feedback and whether you take it or not. Always be receptive. E is for endurance. Endurance is so important because it's failing. But it's not failing, it's learning. And it's not just learning, it's learning always, again and again and again. The most successful people in the world fail. They fail over and over and over and over and over and over again. I, I think it was uh, Thomas Edison had a hundred patents of the light bulb before the light bulb was actually created. He was failing. He failed a hundred times in a row. And now he's remembered in the thoughts of billions. So anytime you would like to increase your potential, increase your meaning, increase the value of your life, think about the law of attraction. Think about learning moments, being a genius <laughs> through curious questions and feedback, open, receptive feedback, endurance, persevering, being determined. Thank you. Woo!